What makes addiction really challenging is even after someone's been clean for a year or two years or five, things like stress, pressure, burnout, physical injury, pain, drive the craving and the, and the stress level up and the desire to drink or use can come back in full force. And unless they have good defenses in place, good program stuff, good abstention, support group, tools, utilities that they use to stay clean, they're always at high risk during those intervals of high stress to return to drinking or using. And I think probably the best example is, is you see people become non-smokers after smoking cigarettes for many, many years. And people wonder, wow, you've been off of nicotine for 10 years, why did you return to it? Almost every case they'll say, I was really stressed. I started gaining weight or I had pressure at work, went through a divorce, and something about when stress comes up, it lights up the nicotine receptors in the brain and the craving is overwhelmingly powerful and people go back to it. Well, that in itself is just kind of a microcosm of what it is for alcohol, what it is for cocaine, what it is for heroin. Times of high stress, high alertness, worry, difficult times, or as we talked about, mood disorders like depression or anxiety, people are completely vulnerable to going back to their drug of choice. How do we correct for this? Well, it's one, just knowing that, that this is what the dynamic is and understanding this is why we have to take care of our mental health. This is why we have to be aware of where we're at. This is why if we have anxiety, we need to treat anxiety. This is why if we have depression, we need to treat depression. We need to live in practical ways that keep our bodies and our minds and our environment in a healthy routine. 